welcome or welcome back at c squared in this lesson we will talk about the slope and the slope is the ratio of the change in the y coordinate which is also called the rise to the change in the uh, x coordinate which is also called the run this is the algebraic way and also you can see here a graph which shows you uh, two points x1 and y1 this is the first point and the second point has the coordinate x2 y2 and uh, what we can do to find the slope. Let's take a look to uh, the four cases. We have a case when the slope is positive, this one. When the line goes up from left to right, the slope will be positive. The second case, when the line goes down from uh, left to right, the slope is negative. The third case, when you have a horizontal line, the slope is zero. And you notice we have only a run there. There is no rise. That's the reason the slope is zero. And the last case is when you have a vertical line where you have only rise, no run, the slope is undefined. Now I'm going to look to some example where we're going to calculate the slope using the formula. I just talked about a couple minutes ago. This formula m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The letter m, by the way, stands for the slope. What I will suggest you, label the points always, the coordinates x1, y1, x2, y2, before you plug them in the formula, because that's what I'm going to do now. So I have y2 minus y1, that will be 6 minus 1, and x2 minus x1, 2 minus negative 1. And let's see what we get. 6 minus 1, it's 5. 2 minus negative 1, that will be positive 3. The slope is 5 over 3, a positive slope. If we plot those two points, I expect to get a line that goes up from left to right because the slope is positive. Let's take a look to the second part of this example, B. The same formula. I'm going to write it one more time. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what do we get here? And by the way, like I said, you want to be consistent. You can switch the points. Let's say this one is point 1 and this one is point 2. Let's see how much the slope is. So we're going to have y2, that is 3, minus y1, minus negative 4, over x2, negative 4, minus x1, 1. So we're going to have here 3 minus negative 4, that will be 7. Negative 4 minus 1, that will be negative 5. The slope of this line is 7 over negative 5, which is good, but we prefer most of the time to write it in this format, negative 7 over 5. This slope is negative. That tells me the line, in case I graph those two points, should go down from left to right. The third part of this example, we have these two points, and again, I'm going to label them x1, y1, x2, y2, and I'm going to have m equals, again, let me write the formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and we have y2, that is 2, minus y1, that is also 2, 2 minus 2, and x2, 3, minus x1, uh, minus negative 4. So we have 2 minus 2, that is 0. 3 minus negative 4, that is 7. That's the slope. 0 over 7, it's a good value. However, that can be simplified as 0. The slope of this line is 0. In case you plot those points, you will notice you will get what we call a horizontal line. Whenever the slope is zero, you have a horizontal line. And the last part of this example, we have again two points. 
x1, y1, x2, y2. And I'm going to use again the slope formula m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And let's see what we get. We get here y2, that is 2 minus y1, 4 over x2, negative 3, minus x1, negative 3 also. So let's see what we get here. 2 minus 4, that is negative 2. And negative 3 minus negative 3, that will be 0. So we have here negative 2 over 0. Be careful, this is not 0. This is what we call undefined. You cannot divide by 0. In case you plot these two points, you will notice you will get what we call a vertical line. Vertical line, the slope is undefined. Sometimes you can find the rise and the run just by counting. In other words, you don't really need to use the formula. And I said there, uh, last part, be sure you identify the sign also. So let's see this example. We have a picture. Uh, we see the points. We can use the slope formula. But like I said, you can just count. How are you going to do that? I will suggest you to draw this triangle. It's a very useful triangle. Slope triangle and count. And let's see. The slope is rise over run. That's the form I'm going to use now instead of uh, the other one, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And let's start with the rise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The rise is 6. And the run, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the next thing I'm going to look is how this line goes. It goes up from left to right, so the sign will be positive. I don't have to put it here. Also, you want to take a look and see if you can simplify. No simplification here. So this is the final answer. 6 over 5 is the slope. One more example, the same idea. I'm going to use the formula rise over run. And I'm going to draw the slope triangle. By now, you know what that is. It's this triangle. I'm going to count. 1, 2, 3, 4. Also, just to start to rise all the time. So that is 4. And there are 1, 2, 3. Okay. And by now, be careful. This line is going down from left to right. So you have to put a minus here. And also, don't forget to look if you can simplify. In this case, we cannot. So the slope is negative 4 over 3. If the coordinates of the points are not given, like in the other two examples, you may want to try to identify two points. Let's take a look to this example. You notice uh, we do not have any given points. So what are we going to do now? We're gonna, you're going to take a look to the line and see if you can have any good points. This is not bad. It's a very good one. But this is also a good one. This is also a good one. And we have we have multiple choice. It really doesn't matter which one you choose. But let's say you choose these two. You see, I'm drawing the slope triangle. And I'm going to count. One, two, three, one. 2. So m equals again rise over run. I'm going to use this formula. And we have the rise is 3 and the run is 2. It goes down from left to right. So negative 3 over 2 is the slope. You can use any other two points. You will notice you get the same value. Um, and the last thing I'm going to talk about in this lesson is this example where you have to find a missing coordinate of a point, but the slope is given. So in this case, we need to find the value of R so that the line that goes through these two points, 1, 4, and negative 3, and R, so R we need to find out has a slope of 1 half. So I'm going to start with the slope formula, M equals y2 minus y1 over 
x2 minus x1. And what do we know here? We know the slope is 1 half. And then what do we know? So now we, we can label these guys x1, y1, x2, y2. You can switch them. It really does not matter. Just be consistent. y2. So we have here y2 minus y1 r minus 4. And x2 minus x1, negative 3 minus 1. So the first thing I will do is to simplify on the right side of this equation, because you have an equation, equality. And what we can do here is negative 3 minus 1. That is negative 4. And this stays r minus 4. And you have choices here, but I think the best way in this moment is to do the cross multiplication like this. So I have 1 times r minus 4 equals, in fact, I'm sorry, 1 times negative 4 1 times negative 4 equals 2 times r minus 4. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4 and this is distributive property. 2 times r is 2r 2 times 4 is 8. Don't forget to put a minus. We want to solve for r a simple two-step equation. We can add 8 here to get rid of this minus 8. Negative 4 plus 8 is positive uh, 4 equals 2r. And the last step, divide by 2. And we have r equals 2. So uh, that's it. The, you may want to replace this one, negative 3 and 2. You have the first point you and you want to check it, plug it back in the slope formula and see if you can get one half. If you enjoyed this video clip, don't forget to click the like button and come back on C-square for more help. Thank you.